Hey, good people. I'm going to show you how to clean your sewing machine, something that needs to be done probably a little bit more often than you think it does. Uh, I know a lot of you are interested in how I do all kinds of sewing projects and other little crafty things with my long fingernails. Unfortunately, you are not going to see that today because I cut my fingernails off this morning. <laughs> When it is uh, sewing season, which usually is around May, June-ish, I cut my fingernails off so that I can get to my projects more efficiently. And also, usually it's about that time of year when a lot of them start to crack and break because they've grown out really, really long and I need to do my nails every 10 days instead of every two weeks. And I just don't have time for that. When it gets warm, the last thing you're thinking about doing is your nails. And as a nail technician, it takes me four to five hours to do my own nails. This cuts down time immensely. So it's not very often you guys get to see you with short little nubby fingers like this. But sorry if you want to know how I do stuff with long nails. You're going to have to wait until the end of the year. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is show you how to clean your sewing machine. This is very, very important if you want your sewing machine to be with you for many, many years. Um, you want your sewing projects to go seamlessly without any issues and to show that you appreciate your sewing machine. Um, the place where I initially was gonna take my machine to get maintenance was um, about half of an hour away from here. And we've actually got two, maybe three sewing centers where you can take your machine to have it serviced. The one place I was gonna take mine to have serviced it was going to cost $90 and that is just to maintenance it. If you had any broken parts, that was going to cost an additional amount. And I felt like there was one piece in here that was broken because I was having this same issue all the time, no matter what tension I was using, no matter what kind of thread I was using or what kind of fabric I was using. Come to find out all I needed to do was just change my needle. So anyway, um, if you don't have $90 and you have a little bit of time, I'm going to show you how you can actually clean your own machine to keep it in working order. Now this is not going to fix major issues like tension issues. Um, it's not going to fix um, if your computerized machine's computer gets jammed up. This is just something to keep your machine in working order until you can get to like a professional. Now I've had this machine since 2010 um, and I have really, really had no issues out of it. I actually use this one pretty regularly for all my projects. Like I don't have another sewing machine, I have a serger, but I have not used my serger since I got it like two years ago. But uh, I learned from another lady on YouTube and I'm gonna try and go back through my history and see if I can find it, but it was years ago when I watched it on how to clean your sewing machine. It's actually very simple. Um, she did not have the same sewing machine as me, um, but still you can do this with your own sewing machine. So, um, I would say, if you're a person who likes to lose things or you get things mixed up, this would be a good opportunity for you to make a diagram of your sewing machine. So this is what the back of my sewing machine looks like, and I have all these little circles here. That's where all of the screws go in the back of my machine to keep the front and the back together. So you might want to draw yourself a diagram and then number each of these holes. And so when you unscrew your screws out of the back, you can actually tape your screws under each one of these so you know exactly where they go back into. Now I will not be using this because I have maintenance my machine enough to know which screw goes where. But for those of you who may not be as savvy um, with tools and stuff, this would be a great idea for you to go ahead and make a diagram of the back of your sewing machine. So let me uh, tell you what you're going to need for this. To maintenance your sewing machine, you're going to need a screwdriver, a small vacuum attachment or can of air, soft paintbrush, cotton swabs, baby wipes, sewing machine oil, new machine needle, and scrap fabric. First things first, we're gonna remove everything that we don't need to clean this, which is your quilting bed, your flat bed attachment. Also, you're gonna make sure that you remove your foot controller and the socket connector. We don't want any electricity to the sewing machine while we're trying to clean it. 
Also, you should have a sewing machine uh, screwdriver specifically for your machine that came in the pack with it to remove your bobbin case cover. Also, make sure that you remove your presser foot and needle while we are cleaning because we don't want to get stabbed or damage any of that. Also, remove your bobbin case and bobbin. With a regular screwdriver, turn your sewing machine around and get started unscrewing those normal screws that are in the back there holding it together. Again, make sure that you put these in a place where you're not going to lose them or tape them to a piece of paper. If you find yourself not being able to uh, take your front at, from the back part of the sewing machine, that's probably because you have another hidden screw. In my front panel, there was one more screw that needs to be undone before you can open it up just like this. And now you see the guts of your sewing machine. If you're interested, you can find a mini vacuum attachment from Harbor Freight Tools. I obviously don't have all the pieces I need because I could not get these to correctly connect to my vacuum hose, but I was able to wing it. I just taped it on. <laughs> so you wanna try and use this first to get any large chunks of debris away from your machine, especially out of that bobbin case. Next, we're gonna use a soft, fluffy paintbrush to get all the fine debris that the vacuum attachment did not pick up. And again, focus yourself inside that bobbin case because that's where most of your lint is gonna be. Last but not least, please use cotton swabs to get all the dirt that's really hard to reach and do not shove this into any of those metal mechanisms and make a mess or ruin something. Next, we're gonna be using this Dritz Zoom Spout Oiler. You can find this at Joann Fabrics and I'm pretty sure you can use your Notions coupon on this. Uh, it has a nozzle on here for hard to reach places, but we're not gonna do that, okay? Because this stuff is a very light oil and you don't need to squeeze the bottle very hard in order to get it to come out. So how do you know what to oil? Well, using your hand wheel, turn it a couple times slowly, and anything that has a joint or a pulley or that is moving will need to have oil on it. But make sure that you clean those with either your paintbrush or your Q-tip before you start oiling because we don't want a bunch of gunk in mixed in with that oil. We want it to have all nice clean joints so that all of our parts stay moving and working and they don't get all gunked up and stuff. And keep turning your hand wheel because you may find places that you missed before to oil. Once we are done with the oil, we are going to use a baby wipe and we're going to just rub down everything that may have dust and debris on it. Anywhere where oil may have dripped because you oiled it too heavily. But do not rub any of your metal parts because we don't want those to get rusted. If you're having any trouble reattaching the two pieces front and back of your sewing machine, it's probably because the inside of the tension wheel is running into another piece on the back side of the sewing machine. Make sure that mechanism is either in front of or behind that uh, tension wheel mechanism on the back side because if you don't, you're not going to be able to freely move your tension wheel and without the tension wheel, you cannot sew anything. So if you're having trouble there, just kind of Play with it a little bit, make sure that it's in front, I think. <laughs> I just know I had a little problem with it, uh, reassembling it tonight, and that's what it was, is it was running into that metal piece instead of either on either side of. By this time, you should have reassembled your bottom case cover, the bottom case, put your presser foot back on, and last but not least, Please replace your sewing needle after every single project. It will help uh, to catch the bobbin underneath and it will make for really nice seams. This is the main cause of sewing machine jamming up. All right, so now that we've got Humpty all put back together again, we've definitely got to test our sewing machine to make sure everything sounds and looks good because if it doesn't, you're going to have to disassemble this and try reassembling it correctly again. And we don't want to have to do that. But before you start sewing on an actual project, test it and make sure that you put it back together right. So you need to grab yourself a piece of scrap fabric and fold it over so that you have two layers. Go ahead and uh, lower your presser foot and go away. The machine sounds really good. The tension looks good on here. 
everything seems to be in working order. Looking at it, it looks very, very good. I may need to adjust the tension for this particular fabric, but it looks like everything is going pretty good here. So I hope this video helped you um, with your sewing machine maintenance. If you just can't get to somebody um, nearby, if you have nobody nearby, or if you're in a pinch for time and your sewing machine is kind of acting up, or if you have not had it done ever or have not had it done in a long time, you really need to take the time and effort in order to make sure that your machine stays working well. Otherwise, you're going to keep buying machines every so many years. So, I hope this video helped you guys out a lot. Let me know if you tried this with your machine and if it helped fix anything. And I will see you guys later.